first came to the National Prayer Breakfast, it was about 400 people. That was 20 years ago. And then Richard Bragdon came along, and he took the words from the scriptures, go forth and multiply, literally. <laughs> and here we are, with 1,300 people, a testament to his incredible ability to bring people together from all backgrounds to worship the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Richard. And uh, I was just talking with the Grand Chief uh, as we looked out at the audience during the incredible music, and we looked at the various degrees of enthusiasm and were able to determine which in the room were Catholic, Presbyterian, and Anglican, and which are Evangelical and Pentecostal. It's very evident, wouldn't you agree? Now, you might be wondering why all the politicians are at the front, being recognized in name, and uh, some might be confused into thinking that's because we're the most important. In reality, it's because we're the ones in the room most in need of redemption. Um, <laughs> and um, leadership does indeed require humility. Uh, as Proverbs said, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before the fall. And faith requires humility, especially from leaders. And faith requires humility in that it is a universally powerful concept that is bigger than any one of us. I think of the Grand Chief's mother, Loretta, reading the Lord's Prayer in an ancient language, Anishinaabe. Of course, first it was spoken in Aramaic by Jesus, and then it was translated into the scriptural classical Greek, and then it has been spoken in languages all around the world, but always with one universal message, bigger than any one language, any one people, and certainly any one person. For me, my faith intersects with my political values in one particular area, and that is the value of free will. God gave Adam free will. You can see this on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the creation of Adam, where God's hand literally reaches out in an attempt to touch the hand of man, and behind it is what is the shape of a human brain. And inside that brain are a number of caricatures. And in that moment, God handed free will to man and said, now you are free to do as you wish. He will judge later on, but in the meantime, man is free to do good or evil. Man is free to decide for himself. And surely, if God can give free will to the people, we political leaders must give the same. We must have the humility to give up control. The word minister in the church is actually the same meaning, root meaning, as minister in politics. The root meaning of it is servant. Prime minister, therefore, is not first master, it is first servant. Uh, the people, of course, in a democratic system are the masters. They choose the commoners who grant and withdraw, hopefully withdraw at some point in the not too distant future, the confidence uh, that allows the ministers to serve. And that service is always rendered with the people on top and the servants in leadership on the bottom. And then the relationship is between people and their God, free from any coercion. That principle requires us as leaders to have humility. And humility is what takes us over the troubled waters, because just as in politics one has to give up control, if one wants to be relieved of the anxiety and the tumultuous stresses of life, one again has to give up control. 
and accept that God is in charge and that he will chart your path and the, the way will be made straight for you. And nowhere was this message more beautifully passed on during the life of Jesus than in Mark 4.35, Jesus calms a storm. It says, on that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go out across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke, they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? In other translations, it's the wind and the waves. The wind, the cause. The waves, the effect. God is able to calm the cause and the effect of the troubled waters in our lives. It reminds us, yes, it was not a new message. Those on the boat who would have been schooled in the earlier scriptures of the Psalms would have remembered when Jesus, when God said before the time of Jesus, be still and know that I am God. This is now a refrain used in meditations all around the world. Be still and know that he is God. Be still the winds and the waves and calm the waters, bring tranquility to each soul and peace to the world. God bless. Thank you.